In a galaxy far, far away, a monkey starts to beat the crap out of... Wait, is this the wrong myth? Well, sort of. While one game takes you on a wild space ride battling Imperial forces and contemplating why stormtroopers still can't hit their shots, the other game hurls you straight into Chinese mythology, where you'll probably get smacked around by a giant monkey for not knowing your folklore. In this video we will compare Black Myth Wukong and Star Wars Jedi Survivor, where one game makes you question your force skills, and the other makes you ponder whether you should have taken martial arts lessons before picking up the controller. We will ask the biggest question, why did one game outperform the other when fundamentally they have the same mechanics? Let's start with exactly that. The mechanics. Firstly, both games are at its core Souls-like games. Just like all the games in this category, the main character in both games can dodge and parry, has different spells to control the battlefield, and the enemies respawn after you rest at certain shrines. They also have healing potions that are refilled after a rest. In both games, the main character has one weapon that has multiple stances, and the weapon itself can be upgraded as well. For Star Wars, this is the lightsaber, and for Wukong, it's the staff. They also have similar skill trees. They both got the survival tree and the magic tree, where for Star Wars, this is the force tree, and for Wukong is the mysticism tree. The combat for both games is also similar in its fast-paced and precise movement, where every move you make counts. Both games are very challenging forcing players to learn enemy patterns and master timing to survive against even more powerful enemies. Now these are the similarities. Let's see what are the things that stand out for both games. Since we just talked about the skills, Black Myth Wukong has another skill tree for a new mechanic that doesn't just stand out compared to the Star Wars game, but it's a whole new mechanic that you won't find anywhere else. This is the transformation mechanic. It allows players to morph into various mythical creatures, each with unique abilities that adds a strategic depth and variety to the combat. Now let's talk about the world. In both games you will find linear paths with a few ramifications that end up to the same end. While Black Myth Wukong has this throughout the entire game except for the last chapter, in Star Wars Jedi Survivor you will very quickly unlock a huge open area on the main planet, making this a semi-open world, allowing for exploration through shortcuts, hidden paths and puzzles. Still in Star Wars Jedi Survivor, traversing the world is a core element of the gameplay, offering a wide range of movement abilities such as wall running, climbing, double jumps, and using the force to manipulate the environment. You will even have mounts to help with the traversing. You will also be able to explore diverse planets, each with unique biomes, from lush jungles to barren deserts and sprawling cities. Black Myth Wukong World is also rich in Chinese mythology, featuring vast landscapes ranging from ancient forests to mystical temples, each filled with hidden secrets and dangerous enemies. Fast travel is available on both games using the rest points, making exploration more seamless across large areas. Now, I personally think that Star Wars Jedi Survivor does a way better job at traversing the world, as not only does it give the player a multitude of ways of traversing, it also gives us a map. Wukong on the other hand doesn't have a map, the traversing is basically just you running or walking. And the worst part of this game are the invisible walls. They simply break the immersion. You will find these invisible walls everywhere. You can't jump off the cliffs of bridges as these walls stop you from doing that. And even in the final chapter where you unlock a way to fly over the terrain over a huge open area, you will still be stopped by these invisible walls. Now let's talk about the enemies. Both games throw a ton of basic foot soldiers your way. And then, of course, you've got the bosses. Those big bad enemies waiting to remind you just how tough the game can get. Now for the Star Wars Jedi Survivor, you got a lot of these foot soldiers, like the Imperial forces, the droids, even wildlife creatures, bounty hunters and mercenaries. But unfortunately, there are very few big bosses. So few that I can count them on one hand. Sometimes you get to face these bosses twice. And to top it off, even though they've got a few moves up their sleeve, these bosses feel more like walking piñatas. Tons of health, hit like a truck, but instead of a thrilling fight, it's more like a long, slow endurance test. Black Myth Wukong on the other hand still has tons of basic enemies, but it has over 100 bosses, each of them with its own unique movesets, abilities and animations. Each of these bosses feel different, like it's designed to test the player's skills in different ways, and all of them with its own story and complex phases. Now let's talk about the vibe, the story, and the world building of these games. 
We know that both of these games have a large fan base. Star Wars Story began more recently, debuting in 1977 with the movie A New Hope. And since then a lot of new movies, books and shows have come out. All of this enriched the world of Star Wars even more. Black Myth Wukong is way older. It's based on the Journey to the West, a Chinese novel published in the 16th century during the Ming Dynasty. This is a folklore story that is very famous in East Asia. Still, we are going to judge this part on how well the games themselves can portray the story and world. For Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the story follows Cal Kestis, a Jedi Knight that fights against the Galactic Empire. Cal is struggling with his role as one of the last surviving Jedi while facing internal and external challenges. In Black Myth Wukong players take on the role of a nameless monkey as he embarks on an epic quest through a mythical world filled with gods, demons and spirits to find his destiny. Now both games have a strong premise that keeps players engaged and eager to dive deeper into the story. However, one stands out more by skillfully weaving short cinematics into the narrative, enhancing the overall storytelling experience, and that is Black Myth Wukong. I mean just look at this scene, where we are presented with a story of a boss enemy. <laughs> this animation sent shivers down my spine. It's truly captivating in both its grotesque and beautiful elements. Just from this 4 minutes animation, you can see how masterfully they managed to incorporate the character's personality and story. Now, if you haven't guessed it, Black Myth Wukong outperforms Star Wars Jedi Survivor by far. Star Wars has 67,000 all-time peak players, and Wukong a whopping 2.4 million players. I personally love both games, and I must say that when exploring the world for me, Star Wars was way more enjoyable, mostly because of the traversing mechanics and the puzzles. But Black Myth Wukong has given me over 100 bosses that I will definitely not forget anytime soon. The masterful cinematics that this game offered truly has left me speechless and turned me into its biggest fan. Lastly, I want to talk a bit about art style and the graphics. While there is a year gap between the games and the technology that was used to make them, they both look amazing. But Star Wars feels a bit more generic when it comes to its art style when compared to Black Myth Wukong. You can see the love that the developers have put into Black Myth. The temples and the statues have so many small details that you can just spend hours just looking and admiring the art design of the game. I mean just look at this area and even the ground. I just can't believe my eyes of the level of creativity that was put into the design. This is a game that truly makes you stop and admire the scenery. You can see the love that the developers have put into it. As a final thought, I can't help but imagine how incredible it would be to see a combination of both Star Wars Jedi Survivor and Black Myth Wukong elements in a future game. Wouldn't that be something worth playing? What do you think? If you liked this video consider subscribing and if you have any questions leave them in the comments.